So the evidence has to be probably showing your attorney why you think it's detrimental to your daughter that when she had strep throat, he wouldn't allow her to be on antibiotics, why it's detrimental to your daughter that you're too stressed to homeschool, but he is refusing to let her be in public school and holding you to the homeschooling, which is harming you and your daughter, possibly. To me, those are probably the two main issues that she probably needs to talk to an attorney about. Will he be upset and will it upset the what she calls the co parent ship? Right. The answer is yes, it yes, will. Yes, it will. You thought you could get a divorce without getting a divorce. Mm. <laughs> and Rick, you talk about this a lot. She's gotten right. the legal divorce, but she has not yet gotten the emotional divorce. And no, she's not free. You left the marriage maybe because you didn't agree with him fundamentally on some values. Now you're realizing. You know, I didn't address those during the divorce. Now I'm going to have to address them after the fact. Hey, listeners, are you feeling trapped by your co-parenting relationship? Well, that's pretty common. So Rick and I are going to be doing a live Zoom workshop on March 17th. And we'll break down the concept of having a plan B. Plan B is when your plan A doesn't work. Plan A is negotiating successfully. And sometimes that's just not possible with an impossible co-parent. So learn how to get your kids what they need without the other parent's permission. Just check the show notes for the link. And if you want a 50% discount, become a Patreon member. You can find the link to that as well in the show notes. Hey, this is Diane Dirks. And I'm Rick Voiles. We've been working with co-parents in conflict for more than two decades. We've taught classes, written books, counseled parents, empathized and agonized a few times to help people make sense of their complicated families. We were talking one day and it occurred to us that helping the most difficult cases comes down to one simple concept. Is one parent willing to let go of the tug of war rope or is it worth it to hold on and fight? So we invite you to take this journey with us each episode as we tackle the questions, should you hold on or let it go? Welcome to Co-Parent Dilemmas, where we give you practical solutions to those impossible co-parents. Good morning, Rick. Hey, Diane. How's it going? It's going great. Good. Wow. That sounded like really positive. Well, it's so great. <laughs> whether it is or not, I'm just positively thinking it's great. <laughs> okay, let's see. I think by the time this airs, we're just beginning March. Yes, I think so. Uh, right on the cusp. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, I remember I'm dating myself now, but I remember somewhere in the early 80s when I had my first job, mm-hmm. I worked for a large company and my boss was doing projections and he had me typing up back when we used Selectric typewriters. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had me typing up projections for 20 years into the future. And I remember thinking the year 2000, like that was unimaginable to me. Because, you know, when you're right. in your 20s, I think I was only like 23 or something. And it was like, oh, my gosh, you know, <laughs> by that time, I'm going to be like, 46. Uh, yeah. <laughs> life will be over. <laughs> I know. And now what I wouldn't do to be 46 again, right? Uh, indeed. <laughs> so, indeed. Yep. so it does just go by so fast. You Very know? fast. So I'm trying to embrace life every day as it comes. Yep. So today's question is interesting. We got mm-hmm. this email from Jess. Thank you very much, Jess, for your question. And I'm going to let you read. It's a kind of a long email. So Rick, I think that you kind of pared it down to what you thought was important for us to go over today. But um, I was really feeling her, her pain, but I think a lot of what we're about to say is some of it's self-inflicted. Oh, <laughs> do you agree? Yeah. I, yeah. I do. I do. Innocently, you know, innocently. Right. We've all kind of been there, but anyway, why don't you go ahead and Can you give us the highlights of her email? All right. This comes from Jess. My main question is, would you recommend that I take the hard road and fight for full legal custody in my situation? Our primary issues. Due to fundamental differences in our belief systems, we have a hard time reaching agreements related to medical issues and school. His ideology includes a deep distrust for the medical and educational institutions. I can relate to and understand these feelings, 
but I'm much more open to scientific evidence and letting go of control based on what is realistic and best for our daughter, who is seven. As a working mother who owns a farm business and also works outside the home and struggles with executive functioning, I am really struggling to maintain consistency in homeschooling. I see my daughter needing more than what I can reasonably give her. It's time to look for a school that I can afford, which is uh, public school. He is against this, but can't afford a private school either. I don't fully trust that he would recognize a medical emergency and take proper action and feel that I should have the final say regarding medical decisions. Overall, we have a good relationship and are able to communicate fairly well. We have dinner once a week with our kid to have some consistent family time. I know that bringing the situation to court and fighting to have full legal custody and final medical and educational decisions will feel like a big betrayal to him and really rock the boat in our co-parentship. But I'm worried that these issues will only get worse in the future. I also need the schooling to come to an agreement by this next school year and not sure if we can come to an agreement by ourselves. I have access to a free lawyer who can review a custody agreement, but I'm not sure what other support I will need if he decides to turn it into a battle. He has funding from his dad. So I'd love to get your expert opinion. Would it be worth it to go through the legal process? Thanks for reading, Jess. Well, this is going to be a five-minute show. Jess, go, <laughs> go ask your free lawyer. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> right. Well, first of all, obviously, we can't give you legal advice. No. But I'm intrigued by the two questions she asks. Would you recommend that I take the hard road and fight for full custody in my situation is her first question. But then her last question is, would it be worth it to go through the legal process? Those are two very different questions. Yes, indeed. First one is practical and definitely for an attorney to answer. Only an attorney in your area can know whether or not, given your circumstances and the way you present the case, whether or not a judge would see it one way or the other. And even then, they don't know for sure. It's still, you have to weigh the risks and benefits, right? But this last question, would it be worth it to go through it? I don't know. Worth it to whom? Hmm. <laughs> worth it to your child? Maybe. Because... You're saying, <laughs> I'm unclear, Rick, as you might be as well. She doesn't, we can infer what her current parenting plan says. Are you inferring that she's homeschooling because that's what she agreed to do? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, she says yeah. she would fight for medical and education. Does that mean she doesn't have it now? Yeah, I would assume it? so. Right. If you've got a farm business and you're working outside the home, and executive functioning issues sounds like maybe she has ADHD or something like that, and she's struggling. That sounds like a nightmare for you personally. That's right. a lot. Mm. And if it's not serving your child well, then I would say you probably need to do what serves your child well. So, is it worth it for your child? Yes, I would say that one particular issue. Um, but is she and what you didn't read, Rick, and you know, I highlighted some. <laughs> There are many things she says she's suggesting, and he is against that. You know, ah. He's against her putting the child in public school, but he can't afford private either. Yep. You know, another one is about doctor's appointments, and um, he's against medicine or antibiotics. Um, he was against putting his name on the birth certificate when the child was born. Um, there's all kinds of he's against, he's against, which tells me that she's frustrated about negotiating agreement, but it sounds like agreement goes like this. What do you think about? And he says, no. Well, what do you think about this? And he says, no. Or what do you think about that? And he says, no, that's not negotiation. No, right? that's suggesting and getting rejected. <laughs> yes. So which kind of paints a picture of maybe their relationship. What are you picturing this person, this dad is all about? We'll be back after a quick break. Hey everyone, this is Chris from the Financial Philosophers Podcast, and I'd like to invite you to come check out our show. We explore the nuances of personal finance on topics that are both simple and complex. Rather than regurgitating the same financial rules of thumb you've heard over and over again, 
we do a deep dive with real-life examples about compelling and relatable financial topics. I guarantee you will walk away with something new you didn't know before. Come nerd out with us, and let's take this financial journey together. Well, I, he's very suspicious, right, of institutions mm -hmm. and anything that's corporate or has uh, institutional power. And for whatever reason, he maybe he's come by it honestly, and it might all be be true. I d I don't know, but it whether it's true or not doesn't address the issue of like you pointed out how to negotiate with him. Yeah. I get the impression that he's very controlling. And I may be wrong, but she seems a little afraid of his mm -hmm. making him mad yeah. that he's going to, it's going to be a fight. And what I hear kind of in the question is, how can I get this done? How can I, how can we get a yes from him without fighting with him? Yeah. She wants us to tell her she's right, but she doesn't have to fight. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and we don't know if you're right. Um, Jess, we just know what you've presented here to us. And I'm, you were very, you were very um, polite in your answer to that. But I'm picturing the guy sitting on the front porch with the AR rifle, <laughs> don't tread on me flag, <laughs> storing all of his food in a bunker on her farm. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> and I don't know if that's true or not. But you know, he's against medical attention and medicine. You know, I'm yeah. wondering, is this a religious thing? Or is he just one of the prepper kind of guys? Mm -hmm. who, I don't know what happened in their relationship. But maybe she said they have different beliefs. Maybe this is why she couldn't stay in the relationship. Right. But I think she's still married to him. She's still in this relationship. He's still yeah. it sounds like he's making all the decisions and he's controlling. And she doesn't want to rock the boat because they're going to dinner with the seven-year-old, which the seven-year-old probably really loves. So she's trying to do the right thing by the seven-year-old. She's trying to stay in his good graces. But the only way to really do that is just to say yes to everything he wants. And that so her, will not work. Her internal struggle, the inner conflict, is I don't believe that everything he wants is good for our child. Which maybe she's come to now because she's seen the impact of saying yes on the child and on her personal health. Yeah, yeah. maybe. So let's unpack this in bits and pieces. First of all, Jess, your seven-year-old will not be devastated if you stop doing dinners with him. Because if you decide to fight this or yes. even, medi even mediate it, although I'm not sure he's a good person candidate for mediation, but you never know. If you have a skilled mediator, you may be able, and if he's got a decent attorney, together the mediator and the attorney may be able to send the message to him that you really don't want this to go to court because they're probably not going to force her to homeschool, you know, no. or something like that. And he may need a reality check from an attorney and a mediator to say, these are not issues that are going to bode well for you in the courtroom. But again, you know, we can't know that. That's up to her conversation with an attorney. But and I would definitely, if you have access to a free lawyer, I'd take advantage of it. However, make sure that lawyer understands family law. Yes. If it's a estate planning attorney uh, or somebody no, no, no. who, you know, yeah. does DUI work or something, yeah. right? they might not really understand the complexities of a case like this. That's great if you want someone to help you, but you also want someone who's skilled. So I'm thinking, first of all, don't worry about these dinners anymore. They'll probably come to an end and that's okay. It's okay if she doesn't see you together playing nice. Mm -hmm. It won't hurt her. What you need to do is when it does start to feel tense because you're not in agreement, you just protect her as much as you can from any conflict between you. You wait till she's in school before you answer emails so that she doesn't see you're upset or whatever it is because she's seven. She doesn't need to be feeling responsible for any kind of conflict. When you stop doing dinner, say, you know, that's what happens over time. In the beginning, mm -hmm. we just wanted it to be comfortable, but then after a while, things will change. And we've talked about this on the show before. Yes. You don't want to do that for very long because let's say you get a boyfriend or he gets a girlfriend and... The other people say, I'm not hanging out with. <laughs> yeah, what does dinner look like? I'm not like going to do the Friday night dinner anymore. And your right. child will interpret that, that it's the other person you brought into the mix. It's their fault. They're right. the interloper. So it's always a good idea to eventually wean your child from that kind of closeness because things are likely to change. So I would kind of don't let that be part of your decision making. You know, will it hurt my daughter if we stop these dinners? No, it won't. If you 
if you process it with her the proper way. Um, I just wrote an article about this, Rick, and I'm thinking that maybe it might be good to process it through that lens of, first of all, I'd like to refer our listeners and just episode 55, when we had the judge come on and talk about what he cares about in the courtroom. And I thought it was very insightful. And I kind of took that and expanded it a little bit, came up with four things that I think are important for people to consider when they're deciding, should I take this to court? Is a judge going to care? That along with the good advice from a local attorney. Mm -hmm. So the four things have to do with number one, have you done everything you can do to ensure the children are protected from the co-parent conflict, but the other parent persists in putting them in the middle. So it seems to me, and based on our conversation, judges care about that. So in other words, a conflict ensues and the other parent keeps telling the child about it, even though you're protecting the child. The, the child seems worried about it. The child knows everything about court and that begins to harm the child emotionally, then you probably ought to bring that up in court or have your attorney send a letter to the, the parents right. and you need to stop talking to the kids about it because we know that hurts children to be brought in the middle, especially at this young age. Number two, is there a pattern of court order violations that makes it extremely difficult to do your part as a parent or co-parent? So judges don't like court order violations. That's contempt. Right? True. Yep. But it matters what those are. If you violated the court order because you failed to give your 50% of the medical receipts in one month and you didn't pay your $30, I don't know that that directly hurts the children. It might hurt your finances a little bit, but you know, you may decide that's not enough to take to court. When if it's $5,000 they owe you, you mm. may decide, okay, mm -hmm. now it's hurting my lifestyle and I really need to have somebody look at this. But if it's a consistent pattern of court order violations that keeps you from seeing your child, for instance, they're not bringing them home on time or they're taking them at times they shouldn't be taking them or they're keeping you from seeing the kids, things like that, that really are hurting your relationship with the children, then that matters. So a pattern is important. I think Judge Davis talked about they can forgive a one-off, maybe even a two-off, but when it starts looking like it's a pattern of behavior, the court probably should be informed that that's yeah. happening. The third one is, is the other parent consistently preventing you from having access to the children, their activities, their medical care, their education. So if we talk about those four things we always talk about, you know, the religion, medical, education, activities, those are deemed to be important in most states in parenting plans. You know, things should be said about who has final say or control in those areas. So if there's something the other parent is doing that's preventing you from accessing the child or any of those things, then that's important. That's probably something a court is going to want to know about because that can be the beginning of an alienation kind of campaign, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then finally, have you documented a regular pattern of behaviors that makes you worried about child harm or neglect? That directly hurts the child, right? Mm -hmm. you know, if you're starting to wonder whether or not they're getting fed, clothed, bathed over there, or they're coming home with suspicious things they're telling you, and we've done whole episodes on how do you know it's abuse or neglect, right? And typically it is a pattern unless it's a one-time severe situation. So I think if Jess focuses on those four things, I'm not sure what she's saying dad is doing fits into those things. What she's saying is dad and I don't agree on what's best for a child. Right. And he has all the control. Whether be a court order or just her giving in. I mean, if she signed an agreement or the court, I doubt the court ordered homeschooling. So it probably it. happened maybe in mediation or she signed a settlement agreement or something. But if it says that she has agreed to always homeschool the child, he's following the court order. Right. You just now are having buyer's remorse. You know, maybe you signed that order thinking, well, if I do everything he wants me to do, then he'll play nice with me later. But you're finding out that's it's not, not worth the it. Case. Right. So um, she doesn't trust him medically. I suspect she already knew that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't trust doctors. He doesn't trust medicine, antibiotics. That can be a real issue. If she doesn't believe in that as well, again, if he has final say, <laughs> Yeah. He's not in contempt. Right? right? She's just not glad she signed that agreement. <laughs> so, right. 
So no one can tell you just what's best for your child. That's up to you as long as you're not harming your child, right? I mean, the authorities will step in if you're neglecting or harming your child. But beyond that, you can send your kid wherever you want to send your child to school. Yeah, You can take them to whatever doctor you want to take them to. You can refuse to have medical help if it's based on religious reasons. People do it all the time. I'm not saying that's what's best for kids, but I'm thinking you might have a hard argument in the courtroom um, to say he's doing anything wrong. Right. So any of our listeners who are listening who are in the middle of a divorce and you're not yet done with your parenting plan and haven't agreed on anything or haven't gone to court yet, be very, very careful that you're not agreeing to things that you think you can change later. No. Well, I'll just go ahead and agree with this to not have the fight because I'm pretty sure in six months we'll do something differently. Yeah. That's probably not going to serve you well. It's always harder once you've already signed, sealed, and delivered, and the court has signed off on something. It's harder to go back and change it. Very just much. doesn't doesn't say when they went to court originally, or even if they did. Like I said, it could have been consent order or something. But if it's been six months, the court may say, not been long enough. We're not going to entertain this. Or the court may say, yeah, this is crazy. Why did you sign this? I don't know. Right. So the evidence has to be probably showing your attorney why you think it's detrimental to your daughter that when she had strep throat, he wouldn't allow her to be on antibiotics. Why it's detrimental to your daughter that you're too stressed to homeschool, but he is refusing to let her be in public school and holding you to the homeschooling, which is harming you and your daughter, possibly, if you don't feel equipped. I mean, don't homeschool your child if you just don't feel like you can do it, because that's going to hurt your child's education in the long run. Yes, yes. To me, those are probably the two main issues that she probably needs to talk to an attorney about. Will he be upset? And will it upset the, what she calls the co-parent ship? Right. The answer is yes, it yes, will. Yes, it will. It'll <laughs> affect the dinner too. You thought you could get a divorce without getting a divorce. <laughs> mm. And Rick, you talk about this a lot, the the actual the legal divorce versus the emotional divorce. She's gotten right. the legal divorce, but she has not yet gotten the emotional divorce. And no, she's not free. That's the hardest part, you know, is you left the marriage maybe because you didn't agree with him fundamentally on some values. Now you're realizing, you know, I didn't address those during the divorce. Now I'm going to have to address them after the fact. But um, I feel like she just can't break the bond for fear that it will hurt her child somehow. Yeah, that's the message I think we really yeah. want to communicate to her. Your yeah. child is going to be fine if you guys never go to dinner together again. Yeah. Your child can be fine if you two never agree again, because the parenting plan will guide how you're going to parent yeah. together. And you don't have to agree with him. So Yeah. And she also puts it in an either or. Should I keep doing what I'm doing or go fight? Well, neither. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're not comfortable, obviously, keeping status quo. But I don't think you have to go right into fight mode. Uh -huh. I think you walk through the process of having the courage to say to him, you know, hey, let's go see a mediator and see if we can work out some of these issues. I just can't homeschool anymore. Use that as maybe the fulcrum issue that, that you know, and then address some of the other issues once you get into mediation. Mm -hmm. So then when he refuses and says no, then you say, well, okay, I'm probably going to retain an attorney. So I know what I can do about this homeschool issue. <laughs> and I would let him know up front. So there's, you don't want to, guys like this, you don't want there to be a surprise element. Mm -hmm. um, if he doesn't want to be on record, then <laughs> you certainly don't want a court case naming you. Right? Correct. Because <laughs> so, that's public. So maybe yes. just mentioning that will motivate him enough to want to settle at a table with you, right? Or even a still, letter from an attorney. I would, I would still suggest you get an attorney. I mean... I wouldn't I, even go, I wouldn't go to mediation without an attorney just because uh, that's, I think you might be too intimidated. Right. That's what I would say. I would not recommend yeah. mediation on your own with this person no. because I don't know what he has on you or how yeah. powerful he is in his intimidation, 
But yeah, I yeah. think you need someone on your side. Yeah. It's strong. And yeah. the way you explain that is just, you know, I, I don't, I want to know what my rights are. So I feel like yeah. I need my attorney there and he can bring one too. Apparently mm -hmm. money isn't an issue. You know, she may be afraid that he'll say, well, I'll take the kid and homeschool her myself. And she, then you really, I think, have to involve an attorney at that right. point, you know. Right. But he, it doesn't sound like that's the suggestion he's making at this point yet. So no, he's he got really... life good here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, man. <laughs> He's just kind of pulling the strings from afar. Yeah. Yeah. So I suspect that she'll offer it and he'll say no. Then you don't really have a choice. And then he may get upset and yell and scream. And you just have to ignore that because yes. you're confident in yourself that I've got to make a change. Give him every opportunity to do this without fighting. If you end up having to fight, that's not on you. That's he chose him, that him yeah. deciding he's going to fight, right? Either because it's his ego, or it's because his religion, or it's because his radical belief system, or whatever it might be. That's not on you. Mm -mm. You're walking through the process, and it may end up in front of a judge. And if it does, so be it. Um, and delaying the fight isn't doing you or your daughter any good. No, it's probably good to get a baseline here this young yeah. age. If she were 16, I might have a different response. You know, let your child kind of work through this with her dad, but she's seven. Yeah. A long ways to go. I, I would want to sort of get the court looking at it right now, open their eyes a little bit about where this looks like it might be headed, and then get what you need right now. But then maybe in a couple of years, you'll need to inform the court of other issues that are coming up. We just don't know. I'm concerned enough about this dad based on what she's saying that she probably is going to have a fight for a long time. Yes. If they I think have so. these fundamental values differences and they're pretty different. Yeah. I have two practical recommendations or suggestions that if there is intimidation going on and you politely go through the process as Diane suggested, giving him a chance to say no, and then that's on him. But then he, the intimidation may escalate. The One of the mantras you can use is, please talk to my attorney about that. Don't talk to me, talk through my attorney. Your attorney is designed to be a buffer zone yeah. for yeah. you. So please uh, employ that tactic. And the other is, I hope you have a strong support system. I uh, rely on a support system going through this so that they can hold you up uh, and listen for things that maybe you're not picking up on, or maybe sure. it's, it's escalating and, and they're warning you and then you need to seek uh, more help, but rely on a support system. If you don't have one, please get one. Yeah. And like we talked about last week in that episode, you know, managing expectations, is he going to get upset and maybe threaten you? Maybe, yep. probably yep. expect it. Yep. You know, he may send you an email or leave you a voicemail. Can't believe you're doing this to me. This is going to hurt our daughter. I'm going to squash you in court and she's going to be mine. I'll never let you see her again. I don't know. People say stuff like that. Oh all the time. yeah. Yeah. And you're just going to have to ignore that because he's acting out of emotion. That's probably not practically true. and <laughs> is isn't going to happen. Right. And that's when you, send that off to your attorney, <laughs> say, this is what he's saying. So your attorney can say, well, that's not going to happen here because I know the case. <laughs> so yes. you need someone that can be the thinking part of your brain when you get emotional and irrational because of and what afraid. he's saying. And afraid, right. right. And if she does have history with him of fear, whether it's emotional or physical abuse, then she really does need an attorney who gets that and knows how to bring her down off the ledge because he's used to intimidating her and getting what he wants. Right. He's used to her always saying yes. And the day she says no, it's going to yeah. really set him off. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe talk to somebody um, about your safety. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I don't want to imply that I don't know this dad and we're making a huge assumption about him. But, you know, maybe he would never hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. But. If he is prone to some of that radical thinking and he has weapons, I would want to talk to somebody about um, not just driving over there and <laughs> – 
giving no. them a piece of your mind in the middle of this because no. when people get emotional and their kids are involved, they will go outside the boundaries and do things that are pretty unbelievable even to themselves. Yeah. So, you know. Well, we're it, just trying to make sense of how does she keep saying yes to him all the time? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're yeah. struggling with. What is the yeah. picture of him that makes sense of your behavior? Right. And that's, that's what we're trying to figure out here, Jess. Yeah. So let go of um, going through this that, without a fight. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let go of thinking that if I just play nice, he will too. Uh -uh. <laughs> Cause that's doesn't seem to be the pattern here up to this point and hold on to the fact that you're focusing on your daughter's needs. And if that means that you have to shake the apple cart, upset it a little bit, and he might get upset. Okay. But what's more important is that your daughter gets what she needs and you do this in a way that serves your values. Yep. Because it sounds like Jess isn't a fighter. No. And that just may be part of her personality. And we're not asking to come out with guns blazing or boxing gloves and ready for the fight. If that's not you, <laughs> but you do it in a way that serves your values and quit calling it a fight and maybe call it um, a challenge. Self-defense. Yeah. Yeah. Or defending my daughter, you know, yeah. doing what's right for my daughter. So it's going to be challenging. It might not be a fight to you. It's just well, he I, will present a challenge. <laughs> I got to believe that there's a mama bear in there somewhere. Yeah. That's the inner conflict. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yep. Do I protect my child by fighting or do I protect my child by acquiescing? Yes. Yeah. I want to protect my child either way. And we're saying it's probably somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop acquiescing so much and just walk through the process. Yep. With an until attorney. Some, until somebody says to him, this just isn't how it works. <laughs> You're not going <laughs> to win. Right. It doesn't work this way. You know, or the, the job of the court is to protect children. Yes. In this. And again, an attorney can help you understand what judges in your area typically focus on. So get that information and then don't go forward without that huge support system behind you. Yes. All right. That was good. Just yeah, thank thanks, you for Jess. the question. And we hope that you all will continue to write us. You can leave a voicemail on our website. You can write us at 1234dilemma at gmail.com or catch us on social media, which all the links are available on our website at cpdilemmas.com. How'd you like that commercial? I loved it. Perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. The information contained in this podcast is generic. It must not be misconstrued as constituting legal or psychological advice. Decisions relevant to any specific individual, family system, or case require the direct evaluation of skilled, child-centered professionals.